as much as it pains me to say it, the Subaru WRX has pretty bad aerodynamics. Okay, I mean terrible. It has terrible aerodynamics. We simulated it at 75 miles per hour, and it came in with a drag coefficient of 0.32. For a sedan to get a drag coefficient of 0.32 in the 2020s, that's very disappointing. That's worse than a lot of hatchbacks, and hatchbacks are naturally at a disadvantage. In this video, we'll go through why the new Rex has such a high drag coefficient, and it makes me sad because everyone loves Rexes. But here, it's pretty clear that Subaru dropped the ball. This plane is slicing through the center of the car and is colored in the speed in meters per second. From this zoomed out view, there are a few things that stand out. But the most unusual is the aerodynamics of the hood scoop. Zooming in, we can see that even as we approach the scoop, a thick boundary layer forms. You can see this thick green layer forming. That's slow flow. The reason that's forming here is because even though some flow goes through the hood scoop, the very idea of this scoop is to jut out into the flow, have the fast oncoming air to ram into it, and produce high pressure air for the engine to work better. In terms of the high pressure produced, well, as this pressure plot shows, Subaru succeeded there. But this high pressure air is also pushing back on the flow upstream. That then decelerates it, and that's why this thick boundary layer is forming. So we get a lot of drag produced here, far more than the average car. But it's not even the worst part about this scoop. Looking behind it, we get a huge wake. This is even bigger than the Audi SQ5 we saw a couple of months ago, and that was possibly the worst we had seen to date. The air flowing over the scoop is at an angle now, and the scoop itself is very sharp at the front. So the air can't flow over the top of it and stay attached. Instead, it just separates and a massive wake is formed. With that, we get a lot of drag forming too. Look at all this shameful drag spanning the entire width of the windshield. So the trade-off Subaru made was to give the Rex a hood scoop to feed the engine with good high pressure air and get more horsepower out of it, but at the expense of aerodynamics. That might seem like a good trade-off because a good engine can offset that drag penalty, but here, Good high pressure air for the engine to produce more horses is not mutually exclusive from low drag. Here, you could get both. The way to do that is to round the top of the scoop more so that the air coming in meets it at the angle that it already is at. That way, it can stay attached over the hood scoop and not produce this large wake and drag. Literally, just making the top of the scoop more bubbly will still give you good high pressure into the engine while not sacrificing the aerodynamics. But here, the scoop's top is quite flat, and the angle of the air coming over the top is too great, so it can't attach to the scoop's top, and we get this wake and drag. And actually, one of your Migos commissioned us to simulate this car, Simon. We feel bad about it because it hurts to see the wrecks made like this, but if you'd like to commission your very own car, let us know here. One thing that is a little surprising about the hood scoop is its effects half a meter over to the left. Here, the hood scoop is no longer present, but still, a wake is forming. You see this green layer. And it might be tempting to think that this green slow flow is forming here because the flow upstream is simply impacting the window and that's decelerating it. But that's not so much the case. I mean, this is happening to some extent, but the main reason for this slow flow is still the hood scoop. Evidence of that can be seen in the drag orbit where the drag produced behind the scoop fans out and this structure sprawls out to the sides of the window still. And in the streamlined orbit, we can see how the flow over the hood leaks out to the sides too. So the hood's wake and drag produced is not limited to just directly behind it, it sallies more of the flow to the sides too. Moving back to the center plane, we also see another problem with the WRX. The front splitter. It definitely looks cool, but it could be designed better. Currently the flow comes along, tries to wrap around it so that it can go underneath the car, but then it separates. That creates a lot of drag. Then as we can see in the velocity plot, the wake formed, this blue and green region, flows underneath the entire underbody. And actually this shows something very impressive about the Subaru, look at the diffuser. 
despite it getting this terrible wake from the splitter wake, it still performs very well. This diffuser is one of the best aerodynamic features of this car, but we'll get more into that a little later. Back to the splitter plate. Moving over to the left plane, we see the wake it creates is fixed here now, but barely. The flow is very much on the edge of separating still, and that's because this splitter is just too small and sharp. The reason that's a bad combination is because if the splitter is small, it means that it doesn't extend far into the free stream flow. Because of that, it gets caught up with all this highly angled flow, so instead of slicing and dicing through the air that's aligned with this edge, it's now plowing through air that's traveling about 90 degrees to it. So the flow is forced to bend around a 90 degree turn, which it can't, so we get separation. There are two easy fixes for this problem though. The first is to extend the front lip forwards more, so that it's where the flow is straighter. That way, the flow coming in isn't angled as much, and it can then flow underneath almost seamlessly. The second fix is to round the underneath of the lip, that way the flow can be guided better, it will then stay attached more readily. By having attached flow, the low pressure you get underneath will be better in that it will be more stable. Currently, the low pressure we do get here is very unstable. Looking at the rear window in the center plane, we get a very thick boundary layer forming here too, this green layer. This is slow, low energy flow again. That's bad for this car's performance in that we now get lower energy flow being shot into the wake. As such, the drag will increase. What's more, the Rex features a spoiler, and that's good for downforce production. But it's exposed to all this low energy flow, so its efficiency drops. If this spoiler was supplied with higher speed flow, it would be able to kick the flow up more and produce more downforce. But you might see the antenna and think that this slow, low energy flow hitting the spoiler is largely because of it. The antenna is very big, and it has a decent weight coming off it as well. Except, if we jump over half a meter to the left, we still get very slow flow here too. The spoiler is then forced to deal with this suboptimal flow, and its performance suffers because of that. One of the reasons why both of these locations have such slow flow is because of the trunk. Look at the angle the rear window makes with the trunk. We can see that it's quite large. The trunk is flat, and there isn't really any blending of the rear window into the trunk. That means the flow coming down the rear window hits the trunk and has to redirect suddenly. That right there creates high pressure, which is good for downforce, but that high pressure also pushes back and decelerates the oncoming air. That then thickens the boundary layer and reduces the energy of the flow. The same thing occurs half a meter to the left. So, while the large antenna might not be helping here, it's not the main reason why we're getting such low energy flow here. A much better approach would be to blend the rear window into the trunk. That would reduce how disjointed this region is and how much drag is produced. At 40 centimeters off the ground, this plane shows another high drag region around the front. So the WRX has these side inlets except they're closed. On top of that, the sides are highly angled. So the flow that comes along here kind of gets held up a little bit and high pressure is formed here. That then pushes the car back and creates drag. If Subaru rounded this region more, that would help guide the flow more gently around this corner and reduce the high pressure here. Alternatively, they could have opened these vents up and funneled some of the air at the front through to around the sides of the wheels and made air curtains. And looking at the drag orbit, we can see that the WRX could really use some air curtains and wheel vents. You can see this large streak of drag coming out of the top of the front wheelhouse. That drag forms because air inside the wheelhouse needs to escape. So it rolls up out of the top. If the WRX had air curtains and siphoned off some of the air from the front, that would not only reduce the high pressure here and hence reduce the drag, but it would also reduce how much of this air is busting out of the top of the wheelhouse and creating drag. Then if there was a rear wheelhouse vent, that would then allow some of the flow inside to escape out here and not create this large wake and drag at the top of the wheelhouse. So the Subaru could use some wheelhouse vents here. As a side note, 
Did you know that we recently launched our RC airplane design course? In it, you'll learn how to design and build your very own fixed wing planes. Check it out here. So all these regions greatly increase the drag on the WRX, which is why we end up with such a high drag coefficient. But the WRX isn't all bad. It does have a few good things. First of all, the diffuser, as we briefly mentioned before. Looking closer, the diffuser's goodness isn't limited to just the center plane, where there's pretty bad flows handled very well and shot up into the wake still. Jumping over to the left, the diffuser still performs very well. It doesn't look like it because there is still this wake flowing into the diffuser and making it perform worse than the center plane, but it is much better than most other cars. That's because the rear wheel wakes don't flow in too much. In this plane 20 centimeters off the ground, the rear wheel wakes flow out pretty straight. There is quite a lot of high speed flow under the diffuser. That is very good and allows the diffuser to perform better. However, one thing that could make the diffuser better would be to make it a little more aggressive. The general styling of it and the Rex in general is quite aggressive. But what I mean by making the diffuser more aggressive is to angle it up more. That would shoot the flow into the wake even more and reduce its size and hence the drag here. Doing that might come with one problem though. The rear wheel wakes, which are currently handled very well, might start to flow in more. That's because a more aggressive diffuser would come with lower pressure underneath and the wheel wakes would be more tempted inwards. To stop that, adding strakes to the diffuser would help. So making the diffuser more aggressive would be better, but it would also need to be designed to keep handling those rear wheel wakes well too. One thing that might be excellent is the rear edges of the Subaru. If we look at this plane 80 centimeters off the ground, we can see how the flow wraps around the edges quite well. As a result, the wake shrinks and the drag produced drops nicely too in this region. But research over the last decade shows that this might not be the optimal approach. In fact, if the Rex had very sharp edges at the end, the flow would separate definitively there. While that would increase the wake size, on average, it might lower the drag coefficient still. That's because the unsteadiness of the wake would reduce, so on average, the drag produced would drop too. We cover this idea in more detail for those interested in this podcast here. Now, you might be thinking that, well, the WRX has a pretty bad drag coefficient, but that might be because it's producing good downforce, and we all know that good downforce production comes with a high drag penalty. So it's justified. If you're thinking that, then you're right. Generally, at 75 miles per hour, the WRX produces just 4.4 kilos of lift. In other words, this car is almost neutral. That's quite good, except much of the drag produced by the WRX doesn't have much to do with downforce production. Sometimes it is, or sometimes it is, but it doesn't have to be. For example, the hood scoop doesn't play that much of a role in downforce production, but the drag coming from it is still very high. Likewise, the vents around the front produce bits of drag here and there. Most of these regions have nothing to do with downforce production, but drag is produced because the edges are too sharp and even some of the vents are closed. So the air is forced to turn sharply over the edges too. Then we have the splitter plate. We already covered why this design needs to be improved and how the drag from it doesn't have to be so high. In fact, the only two main downforce producing regions that have impressively low drag production are the diffuser and the spoiler. The diffuser should have low drag because that's what diffusers do, but the spoiler to me is pretty decent. Drag does come off it because the wake is so much larger now, the flow is kicked up instead of shot down, but perhaps the low energy flow to begin with means the drag penalty from this spoiler is low because it simply doesn't have the energy to work with. That energy has already been wasted upstream and drag created there. So, while the WRX does have some very impressive aerodynamic features, most of its features could really be improved. If you're posting a drag coefficient in the low 0.3s, then you have to be producing supercar levels of downforce, and not just eking out a neutral level. Rexes are still awesome, and I'm sure the next generations will be better. These simulations were done with open foam. If you're interested in learning open foam, then check out our courses here. And if you want to see the aerodynamics of the old WRX, check out this video here. Peace out, amigos.